there's a complete governance deficit in UPA 2. And that syndrome is spreading to all ministries. And the Congress party is clearly and gladly adding to the mess. Post 26-11, we had heard the Home Minister say that he would attempt to get greater coherence among the various investigative wings and also the intelligence agencies. But now what we find that the Home Ministry is actually moving from one human error to another. Today, as you all probably know, in a very critical, sensational and very sensitive case, we've come to know that the CBI has gone with an expired warrant to obtain the extradition of Kim Devi in the Purulia arms drop case. And the CBI there too, we are not surprised, the CBI there too claimed human error, a matter of oversight. Very much the excuse the Honorable Home Minister has given us in a matter related to the top 50 most wanted criminals in India. It happened yesterday, today we hear another human error dominating a ministry which after 26-11 gave the country a promise, a hope and an expectation that things will be improved and improved in a manner that this country will feel proud about. But on the contrary, one after the other, the human errors are leading to such embarrassment, not just within the country, but even outside. This actually is a feature, if you notice, of the drift that this UPA2 is showing within the first two years, a directionless drift resulting in absolute deficit of governance. A directionless drift which is leading the Indian citizen to look up and wonder what is happening as regards their issues, issues dominating them, whether it is corruption or price rise, but a failure of governance, which was in a very, very suave manner described by the Home Minister himself in an international forum, if I remember correct, as governance deficit. And today we are seeing example after example to underline that this drift is resulting in governance deficit. We saw two examples coming from that ministry for which the Home Minister also told us that he would speak up for his ministry, but not so much for the UPA and its performance. But that ministry which gave so much of hope today has second explanation to give on lack of oversight. And we also hear very enthusiastic references being made to what happened during India time. They have no right to talk about anything. I think if history is what they are interested in, they should have learnt lessons. Even if I want to go by their example and by their quoting whatever happened earlier, what have you learnt out of it, if at all? You suspect something went wrong. We don't suspect anything went wrong. But you don't seem to learn lessons either. The BJP feels that the Home Minister, instead of preparing for a political exchange on the charge that we made that UPS height of incompetency, I repeat those allegations that we made, that there is a height of incompetency in the UPA today, the BJP feels that the Home Minister, instead of preparing for a political exchange, on that charge that we leveled against the UPA, that there is a heightened level of in incompetency, should now focus on his ministry, 
and ensure that there are no such future embarrassments that this country has to face. We are talking about governance deficit in the UPA. We are also talking about a drift, a directionless drift. The Karnataka governor is a classic case where he's almost like becoming like a history sheeter in terms of constitutional impropriety. This is the second time the governor has asked for bringing in the president's rule and again he had to eat his words himself. There's not a word of reprimand, leave alone a question of removing this governor who clearly, whose position clearly is untenable. untenable. He should be removed instantly. The governance deficit, I said, is becoming all pervasive and is across the board going over to all ministries. In the south, already grain and pulses have started coming to the market. Farmers are reaching FCA go-downs. Procurement is not taking place. FCA go-downs are full of grain almost nearing a rotten state or they are stocked with grains which have never been lifted over the last year. As a result, some partial attempt to restore some kind of a normalcy is being happening in Andhra Pradesh, for instance, where the Congress is governing and the Agriculture Ministry here is seized of the matter, we are told. But the effect is some schools are being taken for procuring the grains which are coming in but insufficiently at that. Farmers are being sent back without grains being procured from them. Leave alone talking of giving minimum support price. There is a serious crisis in terms of food grain procurement in Andhra Pradesh and Andhra Pradesh which produces paddy in a large scale today is seeing farmers being sent away and becoming prey to the rice millers and middlemen. And this from a government where the two ministers in the union cabinet dealing with agriculture don't see eye to eye on the matter. One says export the paddy, create open spaces for them to, you know, the FCI go down to receive the grains. And the other says no export. We do not know where they stand. A directionless drift also in that ministry affecting the farmers in Andhra Pradesh, which is considered to be a rice bowl. And today, the Congress government there, Congress in UPA here, have no answer for it. And the division between the two ministers has, is resulting in farmers suffering in Andhra Pradesh. Again, on the matter of farmers, you find that there is a directionlessness especially when there is an overzealous attempt by the Congress's general secretaries themselves to go and approach farmers and find out what is worrying them. They betray all sense of overzealousness and exaggeration, but no concern for the farmers. Where were the general secretaries of Congress when the same thing happened in Andhra Pradesh? Farmers' lands were being taken by force, People were shot at. Two people died due to police firing. General secretaries of Congress did not reach there. They reach only UP. Farmers elsewhere, land procurement problems elsewhere, and in a Congress ruled state is not appearing to them at all. So the drift, the directionlessness is for everybody. And their concern is only where it matters to them. Farmers elsewhere don't matter. We charge today that the UPA 2's level of incompetency is peaking and it's become all pervasive. Level of incompetency, I repeat, is peaking and it's become all pervasive. And I wonder if the government does care about it at all. The second issue which we want to bring to your notice today is of the Sri Krishna Committee report.
we all are aware of the fact that it's now almost five full months after the submission of the report. This report had a section called Section 8, Chapter 8. It was also referred to as a note. That Chapter 8 was also referred to as a supplementary note, a secret note, and it was separately put in an envelope, sealed envelope, and given to the government. The report is about 505 pages, came up with six different possible solutions for dealing with the Telangana problem. And the report itself said, chapter eight was guiding them to give at least three of the solutions that they've come up with. Of the six solutions they came up, three were guided even by the report's own admission by this chapter eight, but which is not available for any one of us to see it. It has been separately submitted in a sealed envelope to the government. So whether it is the Congress party or the opposition parties or any stakeholder, all of us are reading the 505 page Sri Krishna committee report wherein three of the suggested six solutions were guided by the chapter eight, but that chapter eight is kept secret. No one of us know about it. And we are poring over the report to know what are the solutions which the government may possibly come up with. The BJP, as all of you all know, had boycotted the committee then. And we boycotted because we believe we believed then and we believe now that the Telangana issue needs a political solution and no committee can come and give us answers for it. We still believe in that point and committees are not going to give us solutions for dealing with issues affecting the Indian polity. The Congress party is definitely not wanting to take a decision on it, their answer is procrastination, they are delaying the answers, and as a result, there is a great degree of uncertainty in Andhra Pradesh, and therefore we demand today that this chapter 8, that secret note, that section which went as a supplementary note in a sealed envelope, be made public immediately. We are aware that a division bench of Andhra Pradesh High Court is looking into this matter, but in the interest of the larger interest of the nation, we demand that this note be released to the public, or else all of us looking at the entire report will not be looking at it in a meaningfully and as the report itself claimed, in a guided way. Thank you. No, no, CMO is direct under me, CBA, you know, but after 2611, what happened to our National Investigation Agency to appoint the time of appointing the time? That the investigation agencies and intelligence information will be tried to take the time of the time of the time. Is it promised or not? In that case, the CBA said that the CBA is going to go to the CBA, उसका जिम्मेदार मैं और पार्टी होम मिनिस्ट्री को टेराती लिंक है उसमें आज कोपेनहेगन में पुरुलिया ड्रॉप केस में जो मुख्य आरोपी है किम डेवी उनका एक्सट्रेडिशन के विषय के ऊपर सीबीआई 16 में इधर से कोपेनहेगन पहुंचा और उनके हाथ में ऐसे वारंट था
जिसका एक्सपायरी जनवरी थर्ड को ही हो चुका था वो एक्सपायर्ड वारंट के साथ जाकर के भारत देश का बदनाम होने के कारण हुआ सीबीआई और उसका अपडेटिंग भी नहीं किया है उधर पहुंचने से पहले और इसके वजह से हम काली हाथ आना पड़ रहा शक है, है कि कि सीबीआई इसका इफेक्टिव तरीके से हैंडल कर रही है या कि नहीं क्या इतना बेसिक मुद्दा कि वारंट एक्सपायर हो गया है ये आपके हाथ में जानकारी तक नहीं था उसको अपडेट बिना करते हुए आप कैसे पहुंचे कोपन एकन इसका जिम्मेदार कौन है भारतीय जनता पार्टी ये मानती है कि 2611 संगठन के बाद अगर होम मिनिस्टर के प्रयत्न इस डायरेक्शन में थी कि इंटेलिजेंस एजेंसी और इन्वेस्टिगेटिव एजेंसी के आपस में तालमेल होगी और बेटर प्रोफेशनलिज्म मिलेगा वो आज तक नहीं मिला है क्या और कल एक ह्यूमन एरर के वजह से होम मिनिस्टर उनका अपना गलती मानना पड़ा दूसरे बार आज चाहे सीबीआई डायरेक्टली पीएमओ को रिपोर्ट करना वो अलग बात है मगर तालमेल के संदर्भ में क्या होम मिनिस्टर से इतना भी इंफॉर्मेशन उनको नहीं हाथ में नहीं है, नहीं है क्या बार बार ऐसे लैक ऑफ ओवरसाइट के वजह से भारत देश का अपमान हो रही है ये अच्छा नहीं है भारतीय जनता पार्टी की तरफ से ये बात हम बोल रहे हैं कि होम मिनिस्टर हमारे चार्ज जो था आपकी हाइटेंड इनकम्पिटेंसी के वजह से ये सब हो रही है होम मिनिस्टर के बात यही है कि नहीं आई एम प्रिपेयर फॉर अ डिस्कशन और अ डायलॉग ऑन दिस मैटर डायलॉग और चर्चा के लिए आप तैयार ना होना चाहिए अभी आपके काम में आप लगे रहना चाहिए जो कि अब से ऐसे एम्बेसिंग सिचुएशन भारत देश का कभी नहीं होगा प्लीज आपके आप आपके काम में फोकस रहिए हम ये पहले बात कर रहे हैं कि पॉलिटिकल डायलॉग के लिए तैयार रहने के लिए कष्ट ना करें आपके मिनिस्ट्री बेहतर काम करने के लिए जो उम्मीद आपने जताया 2611 के तुरंत बाद उस उम्मीद को और उस प्रॉमिस को बरकरार रखने के लिए और उस प्रॉमिस को फुलफिल करने के लिए आपके टाइम जरा लगे मिनिस्ट्री को बेहतरी करने के लिए let us get the data and come back to you on it at the moment i i have nothing on it the moment i get the data i'll come back to ha oi maine shuruaat mein bhi kahi कि गवर्नेंस डेफिसिट के कारण ड्रिफ्ट एक है डायरेक्शनल डायरेक्शनलेस ड्रिफ्ट हो रही है और उसमें कांग्रेस पार्टी खुशी से संतोष से उस मेस में उस झंझट में उनके भागीदारी भी है ऐसे ही मैंने स्टेटमेंट दिया है उसका प्रिंटेड वर्जन भी आपको आ जाए कांग्रेस पार्टी के डेफिनेटली उसमें इनपुट्स है उस मेस में थैंक यू
नीचे जितने भी लोग हैं उनके ऊपर आंकड़ा लेने के लिए सर्वे जो होने वाले हैं कम से कम हमारे मन में सीधा यही प्रश्न उठता है इस बार इस आंकड़ा इस सर्वे के बाद यूपीए क्या हमें बोल सकते हैं कि एक ही वॉइस में कि कितना लोग है भारत देश में बीपीएल के नीचे ये सर्वे होने के बाद कम से कम यूपीए एक वॉइस में हम उम्मीद रखते हैं कि टोटली हाउ मेनी पीपल आर अंडर पॉवर्टी लाइन क्योंकि ये मुझे लगता है कि फोर्थ टाइम शायद हम असेसमेंट कर रहे हैं कि, कि कितना लोग हैं और इसमें एकजुट मत नहीं है यूपीए में कम से कम इसके इसके इस सर्वे के बाद देखेंगे कि वो एक निष्कर्ष में आएंगे कि नहीं जी वी नीड टू गेट हमें तो कम से कम एक फिगर आना ही चाहिए जी कुछ ही वी कम टू नो दैट दे विल बी ए सर्वे टू एस्टैब्लिश हाउ मेनी पीपल आर बिलो पॉवर्टी लाइन टिल टूडे वी हर्ड अबाउट टू और थ्री डिफरेंट वर्शन कमिंग फ्रॉम डिफरेंट और बेस्ड ऑन डिफरेंट कमीशन एंड कमिटी रिपोर्ट ऑन द नंबर ऑफ पीपल बिलो पॉवर्टी लाइन होपफुली आफ्टर दिस सर्वे द यूपीए गवर्नमेंट विल बी एबल टू टेल द नेशन on one figure that they agree on as to how many really are the people in india below poverty line mr rk rawat i said that rahul gandhi should choose his quote very carefully because it was the same mistake made by mr rajesh that's an advice given by one congressman to another we have nothing more to add on it swami agnivesh ji बहुत रिस्पेक्टेड हैं वो माओस को जिंदाबाद बोलने वाले स्वामी जी हैं और अभी अमरनाथ यात्रा के ऊपर धर्म के ऊपर पंथ के ऊपर खिलवाड़ है ऐसे कुछ स्टेटमेंट दे रहे हैं मुझे इनके कमेंट्स के ऊपर कुछ टिप्पणी देना उचित नहीं समझती हूँ क्योंकि माओविस के ऊपर जिंदाबाद एक तरफ से और दूसरे तरफ से अमरनाथ यात्रा को खिलवाड़ करना बहुत ही दुख की बात होती है जनता दल सेकुलर की कुमार स्वामी जी और कांग्रेस इन कर्नाटका इतने सारे संगठन होने के बाद भी और उनके दोस्त गवर्नर साहब के उनके अपने राय बदलने के बाद भी और उनके दोस्ती अभी और सर्टिफिकेट अभी येडियुरप्पा जी को देने के बावजूद भी अगर ये मांग कर रहे हैं मैं उनसे पूछ रही हूँ पिछले दो साल से कर्नाटका में इलेक्टेड गवर्नमेंट उनके अपने गवर्नेंस के दृष्टि रखते हुए काम करने करने न देने में उनके रोल कितना था कम से कम अब से कंस्ट्रक्टिव ऑपोजिशन के रोल वो प्ले करेंगे कि नहीं ये प्रश्न उनसे मैं पहले जवाब मांगना चाह रही थी उनसे ये इस प्रश्न को जवाब लीजिए फिर भारतीय जनता पार्टी बोलेगी को कौन रहेंगे कौन जाएंगे
read the minister's statement yourself much before you gave his resignation, I hope. He has very clearly said, he has very clearly said that much before he gave his resignation, he did not even attempt to look at the legal options because matter of fact, he did not, he, he was not even aware that he was declared an absconder. And none of his advocates had even briefed him on it. It is all reported today already. And he did not even attempt to look at any legal alternatives that's there beh uh, before him, but he honestly and straightforward went and gave his resignation, saying, sorry, I was not even aware of what was going on. I did not know I was declared an absconder. Here I go, I give my resignation. I think you should look at it first from that perspective rather than look at it from somebody who has been away from the law. Okay? Thank you.